welcome to the show. Today is Friday, May 2nd. Uh, it's not Thursday. I am doing my show a day late. And tomorrow is a big day in our movement because it's the Global Marijuana March. And if you go to the front page of CannabisCulture.com, there's an article with a link in it to all the cities taking part in this year's march. So this has been going on for many, many years, and I've only been to the Vancouver one last year, and now I'm going to be here for this year. But typically, Mark and I would be out in Toronto leading the march there, and I did that for the first few years that he was away. But we're just gonna stick around here in Vancouver for this year, and I'll be out in Toronto anyway for the upcoming Champs Expo, which hopefully you guys out there in Toronto and the surrounding areas will come check out uh, because for the first time ever, Champs is open to the public. I didn't really realize that before, but the Treating Yourself Expo, which happened for three years and we used to go to them, uh, is being kind of turned into or taken over by the Champs Expo. But Champs in the US and everywhere else they hold their shows are only for industry reps and only for you know store owners. So this Toronto event has historically been open to the public as the Treating Yourself Expo, and now that Champs is taking over, they want to continue that public openness, and so it's the only time the Champs Expo will be open for the visiting public to come check out all the vendors and expo people who are going to be there. So that's kind of exciting for Champs themselves as an organizer of events, and for the marijuana movement, because I know there's a ton of people out east in the U.S who travel up and cross the border to come check out the expo there. So that happens on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th, and you can find out info online. I think champsexpo.com has info on their front page with a bunch of different shows, but we'll post something on Cannabis Culture soon letting you guys know that we'll be out there. And we're not going to have a booth for the store this year. We're just going to be representing Cannabis Culture Pot TV, streaming live. I'll be speaking on a panel with the Normal Women's Alliance, and uh, there's a lot of different stuff going on. So I'll try and keep you guys updated and of course follow me on Twitter for the most frequent updates because I'm not really on Facebook anymore. <laughs> so I'll see you guys here in Vancouver tomorrow, Saturday, and that's going to be tons of fun. And I also wanted to show you guys this sweet little card I got from Mark. Now, the envelope has U.S. stamps where it has hearts and it says USA forever. And there's always so many cheesy different American stamps, particularly um, ironic in many cases when you know they come from a federal prison but he just wrote I love my Jody girl and that was sweet and I thought well there's no anniversaries or events coming up so what is this for and it was just a beautiful card that just says Jody I am so proud of you can't wait to be home with you all my love your boo mark and it's just a sweet simple quick card he sent off because I had a very hectic April. I can't believe it's May already, but April was pretty tough because I had to move and I did that quickly, but of course it takes forever. I haven't finished unpacking, but it's also just been busy in many other ways and there's a lot of excitement and tension and like mixed feelings, like all positive, but butterflies, lots of excitement about Mark coming home because for so many years I didn't think about it, I didn't imagine it because if you think about what you're missing, you're going to be sad, so I just didn't bother and now that it's coming, it's kind of uh, overwhelming and <laughs> I don't even know what else to say. So I'm sure it'll be pretty intense as the weeks ahead go by, but I'll be very busy too because next Wednesday I'll be speaking at the Green Rush Conference here in Vancouver and I'll get info about that and put it on my Twitter soon. Uh, that's a kind of medical marijuana investment conference and I'm going to be talking about compassionate cannab cannabis capitalism, which I believe um, is a very positive thing. I think capitalism is good for everybody if we're all ethical capitalists. We all want to make money, that's what capitalism is. As long as you do it ethically and don't screw anyone over, then by all means make money. I mean, that's what everybody wants to do. So I think, however, with cannabis we need to be very careful because of the history of the substance and the enforcement and the monopolies and whatnot. So there's a lot to speak about being compassionate uh, when we're dealing with cannabis in a capitalist market. So that's what I'll be speaking about there, and I'm also going to be speaking on June 2nd or 1st at a Canadian Investors Conference, which is a big non-marijuana event, it's a big money event, and I'm just going to be part of a panel talking about marijuana as an up-and-coming growing industry, as everybody knows. Uh, so that's on the money side of things, but I'm also going to be speaking, I believe, at Idea City. I don't want to confirm it until I know exactly how much time I'm going to have, but I have been invited back, so I will be in Toronto in late June too. And I'm also going to be down in Texas 
pretty soon. Oh my goodness, when is that going to be? It's sometime in June, I think 6, 7, 8, uh, for the Texas Drug Policy Conference hosted by Normal. And that's another major event, and I've never been to Texas except for flying in and out of Houston's airport on my many visits to see Mark. So it'll be very interesting to get down there and meet all the people down in Texas who are going to be coming to this event, and I know there's a lot of people from elsewhere too, uh, because even though we have a lot of progress and positive stuff going on, you've got to remember there are places where you still get 20 years for possession. I mean, there are a lot of places where risk is high and access is low and there's places in Texas definitely like that so I'm going to be very careful while I'm down there but it's going to be exciting to meet a lot of freedom fighters down there in the hot south so I'll post those dates on my Twitter too again it's so much going on I kind of lose track of when and where because of course Mark coming home in the beginning-ish of well his sentence ends in the beginning of July he might not come home till August we're not sure how long this whole progress progress takes you know from all the way down there up to the border but on that note i'm going to hopefully uh, organize a campaign pretty quick here for advanced uh, campaigning for mark to come home because once he's out of the u.s prison system on july 10th he's in customs and immigration and they can hold you for a while and they put you in private prisons so i'm hoping that before mark's sentence even ends we can start making phone calls to Geo Group and Immigrations and Customs Enforcement and the Department of Justice and the Canadian government and everybody saying, get that man home right now. <laughs> so I'll be working on that campaign soon because we want to get advanced pressure so that as soon as Mark's sentence does end, they just say, send him home quick. We're already getting phone calls. Um, that's what I hope to do. So I'll let you guys know more about that as I plan it out. And I'm super, super, super excited because next weekend I finally get to see Mark and it's been five weeks and that seems like a very long time. I'm really feeling like I haven't seen him a lot and our visits have been dragged out uh, for longer periods of time. But I only have, I think, three more visits left or maybe it's only two or in May, June. Yeah, I think I, only, I have three left. So that's, uh, that's not a lot. That's pretty shocking. Um, oh, and I should give out um, best wishes to everybody in the south who's affected by the tornadoes and the storms. Mark's prison was actually shut down and a tornado did hit Yazoo City and there's a photo on my Twitter account. Um, God, Twitter should pay me for promoting them this much, but <laughs> there's a photo on there of the tornado and the size of it and it hit down right by the high school, right where I drive through and uh, Mark's prison was shut down and he wasn't able to get in touch for a bit, but thankfully he was okay and everyone else there were okay too but of course a natural disaster of any kind causes a lot of hardship for people even in the most simple damage of a tree falling over onto a onto a house you know that's that's a lot of expense and uh, trouble for people so i feel really badly for everyone affected by that and just remember with respect to wherever you live there is natural disaster possibilities so get yourself an emergency kit i'm always preaching it <laughs> so just better be safe than sorry better to have it and not need it than need it and not have have it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to wrap up my show right now and I'll be back next week with another one. And I'm just going to give a thanks to a friend who dropped off flowers. He's online a lot. I'm not going to say any names or anything. Just a nice fellow who comes by. But lilacs are totally my favorite flower and I forgot that springtime brings lilacs and I found them on my desk today and it just reminds me of how close we are to summertime and Mark coming home and I just am super, super excited. So uh, thank you for the flowers and the reminder of spring and I hope you guys out there get a lot of sunshine coming soon. So I'll see you next week and do what you can do every day, even small things, to end the drug war. I'll just share an idea. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. We will have the largest global marijuana march in the world right here in Toronto. Toronto, Canada. Ah, my, and my good friends, the Constabulary, are here to help celebrate with us. You know, we just had a magnificent 420 in Vancouver, where we had over 10,000 people smoke out the downtown main square for six hours straight. And get this, there was not a cop in sight anywhere, for, and not one negative anomaly happened in five hours. Can you imagine seven to 10,000 people crammed onto one city block, partying for five hours straight, and not a single complaint? Not a single, nobody passed out. Not a single fight, not an argument in the crowd, just a lot of happy high people. What's that phrase that Matt Murnaugh says? We're high, we're here, get used to it. Let's hear that. 
Let's hear that right now. We're here. We're high. Get used to it. We're here. We're high. Get used to it.